it's going to affect every aspect of our life. Everything we eat, the air we breathe, the water we drink. What this will amount to is a grand experiment. There's not a person in Virginia that is not impacted by the lifting of the moratorium. What regulations will apply? So far we have gotten zero answers. It would take years to recover if there's something went wrong. Years. This basin is a very diverse basin. It goes through both Virginia and North Carolina, and it travels eastward. It goes through different cultures, different environments, and in that sense, it's very important to protect it because it's a unique American river. There are deposits of uranium all over Virginia, all up and down the US 29 corridor. There's been a moratorium on mining in Virginia since 1982. There are several towns and communities on the river itself, and practically all of them depend on the river for drinking water. So, let's see. I've got this pile of uranium tailings 100 foot high, setting on the banks of the Bannister River. Uh, a hurricane or a tornado comes through, a catastrophic rain event comes through. These tailings are washed into the Bannister River, which feeds Lake Kerr, which feeds Bugs Island, which feeds Virginia Beach and the Raleigh-Durham area. The uh, radiation and the cancer was the first concern. And how does the radiation and cancer occur? Well, it comes through the water, it comes through the environment, it comes through the air. People don't realize that they're dependent upon the air that they breathe and the water that they drink. It just boggles the imagination, the size of the problem. What is everything is your health, and once it's gone, I can attest to that. Once it is gone, you have nothing. We live in walking distance to the Bannister River, and it is such a place of beauty. It's all it's going to take is one time, one time for us to have a flood, and for the tailing ponds to overflow, and it run into our water table, and that's it. I mean, I, when that happens, it's contaminated. You can't undo that once it's done. We're located in the Bannister River watershed, uh, approximately 18 miles uh, upstream of where the proposed Coles Hill mining operation would be located. And the Bannister River flows down through uh, Pennsylvania County into Halifax County. The Bannister River is an incredibly important asset for the, our entire community. And some of the questions that were asked is now, are you going to be paddling that uranium river? And so there is definitely a stigma. I'm selling all my local hay to the local uh, people in the area that uh, run out of hay in the spring of the year. We have been very concerned with the, the waste deposits, having radiation particles being embedded into my grasses, and as, as a result, getting into my hay and then getting into their cattle. I, I feel that sometimes uh, economics are being confused with good policy. And Sometimes the economic questions blind us to serious ethical issues. I think we're dealing with unknowns, a number of unknowns. I'm concerned about coming generations of humanity. I'm concerned about the impact on the entire environment. You're in one of my favorite fishing places. This is Ivy Hill on Carr Lake. Um, we are above the, uh, the dam, of course, and um, I've been coming here since 1975 fishing. This could cause contaminants coming to water, and what happens to fishing? All the boats, all the people you see here today, if you can't come out here and enjoy the outdoors and the water resources, this is a waste. The people that have gas stations, restaurants, everything are affected. It's going to be all the way down the line. The whole thing needs to be stopped. Everything else being even, uh, which one would you pick if you were the businessman or businesswoman? Would you pick the community that has potential for uranium mining pollution or would you pick one that doesn't? Can you sell your land and move out? 
would you get anything for that land? We have real estate right here in the neighborhood that's been for sale for up to two years. And when they find out about a proposed uranium mine, they walk away, they don't want it. What do we do? My child, I want him to be able to come home and it, to come home to the same place that he grew up in, not a place that's a ghost town. We have two schools in Chatham. We have Hargrave Military Academy. We have Chatham Hall. People send their children from other countries to attend these schools. Who wants to send their children to be six miles from a uranium site? I mean, they don't. The most important thing that most of the people in Virginia do not realize is this is a statewide issue. So if you really want to save your community, you need to start now and keep this moratorium on. We would like the legislators to at least wait until all everything is settled and the dust is settled before they make a any kind of decision and then let us be have input. After all, we're the ones gonna be affected. We have a right to fight this. We have an obligation to the future citizens of Virginia. I think the most civil of civil rights is the right to breathe clean, free air and drink relatively clean water. Some things are greater than money worth. You know, you, you got to have a place to stay. And my heart and soul and my family's blood is in this land right here. I mean, this is home. I've never been anywhere else. I was born in a Danville hospital and brought here. This is it. How do you walk away? <laughs>